Welcome and welcome back to the channel. This is Lynette, Life With Us TV. And your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with the top 10 things you should never do on a Carnival Cruise. We came up with this list because these things can affect you monetarily or can actually get you kicked off of the ship. Yeah, now, why in the world would you want to do that when you saved up all that good hard-earned money right. to even get to this point? So we're going to hit it real quick and then we're going to get to the end and we're going to ask you all, is there anything that you learned that was new to you? So let's get into it. Tip number one, pack your carry on accordingly. Listen, right here, I'm going to give you a list of things to never, ever put in your checked luggage. And yeah. we're not talking about flight check luggage. We're talking about the luggage that you give to the porter on embarkation day to slide up underneath the ship and, and ends up at your door later on during your cruise, that check luggage. This is the stuff you wanna take on with you because this is the things that you're gonna need to actually board the ship. The first thing is if you are traveling with a passport, you need to have that on you. Yeah. If you don't travel with a passport, you need to make sure that your birth certificate is with you and ID is with you. And now that we're in the land of COVID, you need to make sure that you have your COVID vaccine cards with you. You need to have your exempt status um, email with you. If you are a person that has been permitted to board without being vaccinated, you also at this point need a negative COVID test. Yes. So you need to make sure that that documentation is on you and not going up underneath of that ship to end up at your door later. And also your sea bands. You don't want to yeah, start. I don't want to forget those. You don't want to forget those. <laughs> mm. Especially if you get seasick easily. You ain't lying. Another thing is you need to make sure that your wine is on Hey, you. don't want to forget that, my Nope, because if you put that under the ship, there is a good chance that it will be confiscated. You also want to make sure that you bring your canned beverages with you or your carton beverages with you. There is a such thing as carton water. You can bring that on board, but no bottles are allowed, but it has to be brought on with you. Make sure that your lanyard is with you because it could be a delay in the time that it takes for your luggage to end up at your door. So you you need to go ahead and secure the, the gold card, man. You gotta secure <laughs> that. And also, if there is a delay in your luggage making it back to your door, you need to make sure you keep your medicine. Anything that's really important to you and you could be in a pickle if it is delayed, walk that one to the ship with you. All right, tip number two, and I think we can't stress <laughs> this one enough. Right. Don't be late coming to the ship. I'm <laughs> because this could cost you big time if you miss the ship. So on embarkation day, you could end up losing 100% of your cruise fare. Then you have to may have end up paying money to stay at a hotel and money to get a flight back home. So make sure you don't be late. Set that alarm clock the night before. <laughs> Matter of fact, give yourself a window of time. Like our thing is either two to four hours. Like we like to give ourselves because anything could happen. Stuff could go wrong on the morning, you know, before you get on the ship. So please don't be late because that could cost you big time. So especially if you flying in the day of, you might want to take advantage of the fly to fun in which we did a video on that, which that's going to be linked down below. And you can check that out after you finish this one because the fly to fun will protect you if your flights are late. Not you late, your flight. <laughs> Next, you don't want to be late coming back from port. So if you out in port, it could really cost you. You come back and the ship is gone. Everybody waving at you <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And that could cost you money. You could at the end up going to the to the embassy and having to get a temporary passport. That'll cost you money. Then again, flight home will cost you money. A hotel will cost you money. And then also the money that you spent on the cruise. So I don't know. You could be one, two days in. That's money just gone down the drain. So. Don't be late, man. Please, please don't be late back to the ship. Tip number three. We know a lot of people have the issue of sleep apnea, so a lot of people bring on their CPAP machine. As a travel agent, I get this question a lot. Do I check it or do I bring it on? Carnival requires you to walk that CPAP machine on with you. It is considered a medical device. With that, they do allow you to bring one gallon of sealed distilled water on board with you. You can also pre-buy that as well, but you are able to save a little bit of cost and bring that on with you. So don't check your CPAP machine. Tip number four, mm -hmm. do not, I repeat, 
absolutely repeat, do not smoke on the balcony. So we all pretty much know that there's designated smoking areas yeah. on this ship. And I understand it could be a nuisance having to leave your cabin, go all the way down to the smoking area to smoke when you just can go right outside on your balcony, light up, get your smoke on and be done with. But here's the thing that could happen to you if you do that, man. It could cost you $500, man. Per what? Per violation. So if they catch you out there smoking, oh yeah, buddy. You gotta ask yourself, is it worth it to light up that cigarette, that cigar, that e-cigarette? Is it worth the $500? And here's the worst part of it right here, other than the $500. Cause you could get kicked off the ship with no refunds or no compensation. So you gotta ask yourself, is it worth it to light up on your balcony, <laughs> get $500 charge, and possibly get kicked off the ship? To me, it's not worth it. Just go down to the designated area, smoke your cigarette, and come on back up to your cabin. Absolutely. Tip number five, let's talk about drugs. You know the D.A.R.E. program that we all heard about and read about when we was in and when we were in school? If you're in a state that's marijuana friendly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a medical marijuana card. They follow the federal law when it comes to marijuana possession on a cruise ship. So I brought that up is because that is one of the taboo things that a lot of people think that, oh, because I'm licensed, you know, or it's okay in my state or it's okay in the state that I am sailing from, I can bring that on board. No, no, no. They follow the federal law. The federal law does not recognize it as something that is legal at this time. So that, on top of any other drugs that you can think of, can cost you a $500 fine. Not only that, you can be banned for life. Yeah, never been able to sail with Carnival again. Then you may have to deal with the repercussions of the possession. Yeah. And that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> is it worth it? No. It's not. No. Just save the smoke for when you get back home, man. Puff, puff. <laughs> save it. <laughs> we coming in with a commercial break. Yep. Sponsored by who? Us. <laughs> Listen, if y'all are not hip to the fact that we have a group cruise coming up August of 2022. So if you're watching this and it's past that, I'm sorry you missed it. We might have <laughs> another one coming up. But make sure you drop down in the comments below. We're going to have a pinned comment with all of the information. The direct booking link will have the video where we announce the cruise. Y'all don't want to miss having, a, yeah, having man. a ball with us. Yes, Listen, indeed. We come back like this. Yeah. <laughs> Tip number six. Listen. <laughs> you are not allowed to bring no irons or any steam device for your clothes on the ship. And we stressing this one because we've had some people just begged us on some trips like, you sure I can't bring my iron? Yeah. You sure I can't? I got to iron my clothes. I don't want to go to the iron station. I want something in my room. No, you, you cannot bring those on the ship. They can confiscate them and throw them away, which can cost you money, especially if you bring them on a good eye. You know. <laughs> ain't nothing like that good eye. Just use their eyes. I know it's inconvenient, use their eyes, don't do it. Then it's also a fire hazard too. Right? Yeah. Just do it on the embarkation day, right after the mustard drill. Yeah. Iron all your clothes for the week, boom. Tip number seven, keep your weapons at home. And when we think about weapons, the first thing we think about is our guns, our knives and things like that. But without saying, most of us know that you should leave those at home when you're cruising on a cruise, right? Yes. Even if you have concealed carry, all of that, we know. Leave it at home. Have you ever thought about mace and tasers and things like that? You can't bring that stuff either. If they find that, they will take that from you and they may not give it back to you. So just go ahead and leave it at home. Just leave it at home. Everybody going to be in a chill environment. We don't need mace nobody. We don't need right. to tase nobody. <laughs> you know, you just go to the dining room, get your butter knife or something. And we mainly <laughs> thought about this for the ladies because we know a lot of ladies carry their mace and their tasers in their pocketbook. So it's going to be don't easy. Think about yeah, it. it could be easy to forget you go in there and they find it. Tip number eight. What ne is it, baby? Never ever skip the mustard drill. Now, I know everybody that have been on a cruise ship, we all cannot stand the mustard. Hate it. So man, just go ahead and just do it because you you don't want to be that guy or that girl <laughs> holding up the cruise ship because you didn't you you didn't go to your muscle station, man. So just go ahead and get it over with. And here's the thing that we learned that I did not know this that you could possibly get kicked off the ship yeah. for not doing it. 
So you gotta ask yourself, you done paid all that money and you gonna forfeit that because you didn't wanna attend a 15 to 30 minute mustard drill station. Tip number nine, when you disembark the ship, make sure you're not booking your return flight too early. Rule of thumb is nothing before noon. Because just because that thing says, hey, we'll be back in port at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., it doesn't mean that customs is going to release that ship to be released and that you can get off the ship in time to one, if you checked your luggage, you gotta get your luggage. Yeah. <laughs> then two, you have to wait outside in that crowd of people. Three, then you have to get your Uber, your Lyft, and get to the airport. Rule of thumb, just don't book anything before noon. I know, we don't like to wait around. We just want to go ahead and get back home. <laughs> so with that said, don't risk the fact that maybe when you get to the airport, you're going to have to stand in that line, reschedule, see what's available. Yeah. Noon. Noon. No. Tip number 10. And I know this probably can be very obvious, but on the last trip that we was on, we actually saw this. Don't throw nothing overboard, man. That's it. Yeah, because the last trip we was on... <laughs> This couple got to fight next door to us and clothes was thrown overboard. Yeah, and we forgot to mention they had marijuana and all that over there too, but that's that's a whole nother yeah. story. And but, they ended up getting quarantined to their room. Yeah, home. yeah, they had, yeah. So we don't know what the extent of their punishment was, yeah. but we do know that they couldn't come out of their cabin for the rest of the trip. And once again, if you're caught, $500 fine. Per violation for throwing stuff overboard, you can get kicked off the ship with no refunds, no compensation. And you gotta ask yourself, was it? Is it worth it? <laughs> no. You done spent all this money, time, you've been making your payments for the last 12 months to get to the ship and get kicked off over hey, throwing stuff overboard. How you gonna explain that to your Facebook friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number 11. Bonus I know, tip. I know we said 10, but we got a bonus tip because I know y'all see it. Y'all yes. see it. <laughs> Don't skip out on the travel insurance. Listen, yes, please. When you're getting a quote for your Carnival Cruise, just go ahead and, and lump in travel insurance with it so that you can make a decision on whether or not you feel that it is affordable enough for you to go on because at the end of the day, stuff happens. happens. Yes. This happened during a Carnival cruise. Yes. Didn't happen on the ship, but I was on an excursion and I fell. Ended up having to come home and having to have surgery. Yep. So don't skip out on your travel insurance. And then if you do have an incident, make sure that you report it so that you can have a paper trail so that when you come home, they'll be like, okay, let's go ahead and get old good. The travel insurance to take care of all of this. Yep. Don't skip out on it. It's not worth the risk. And because you didn't go to the medic on the ship, which we had travel insurance. You gonna just tell my business? Yes. Just gonna tell my business? Yes. I'm the travel agent and I didn't do it. <laughs> she didn't go to the medic. I did. And so when she got back home and went to the doctor, it ended up costing us over $400. As my copay. As a copay to get this fixed, man. So, yes, I know it may, it it may, add, it may add up on the price, but you know, it's worth it, man, because you don't want to have to pay the extra money. And then if you have to be um, helicoptered out for some reason, next 20 grand. Whoo, ain't even worth it, man. It's not worth it. All right, so we hope that you learned something today. And get down in the comments field if you have any other not to do's on the trip that we didn't mention in the video. Put them down below. And also, like I said in the beginning, if you learned something new, let me know that in the comments. I want to hear from you. Yeah, man. And on that note, straight from the VA. The Dirty Dirty South. Two up. Two down. Holla! Boo!